I'm logged in as a um, admin on an account that has both search and a submission enabled. So your view could be a little bit different. I'm happy to see some more people joining us today. Um, my goal is to walk through the process of submitting groups um, and working through groups that have been submitted and then returned to you as a submitter um, for whatever reason by the reporter, either a decline or a fee change. Um, to talk about accounting, to talk about um, the roles of people on the account and how you can also search for I will and on I will land records a little bit. If you have any questions, again, please use the chat pod. I'm being backed up today by two people from our team, um, Kristen Delaney Cole, our our communications coordinator, Corey Strasser, who is our um, customer service coordinator. We at Iowa Land Records, we're based in Johnston. We're a small but mighty team. Um, our project manager, Phil Dunchy, has been here since the inception. Many of you may know Phil. Um, he's currently at PREA, the Property Records Industry Association meeting, and they're meeting in Charleston this week. So they're a really good regulatory body for us. Um, and then we have three full-time developers, Kelly, Mancy, and Myrna. All of them live locally. They all work remote. So we see them a few times a year when they pop in for a meeting. But we have a really good communication channel with them uh, through chat and teams and things like that. And um, Census Lo Liang, who is our policy coordinator. So if you do anything at the Capitol, you may have seen Census. And so if you have questions, again, put those in the chat pod. So um, let's kick this off one more time. Thanks for joining us. When you log into um, Iowa Land Records, so back in December, we disabled the old search portal um, that um, looked like this. I'm going to let that pop up here. Looked like this so that uh, you are unable to access that any longer. And we moved everything into one um, site. So search and submit and it's easy to use, and we're really, quite honestly, a big fan of it. So we're going to walk through that. So um, home, clicking here always brings me back to this screen. Um, I can change my password if I need to. Um, I'm not going to do it during the webinar, but remember that passwords must be strong. So they're a minimum of 14 characters, both upper and lowercase letters, numbers, special characters, and those are um, highlighted for you here, what you can use. So um, just remember that, that that's there. Um, and I'm gonna click back to submitter to get back to the home screen here where I'm gonna do this. This is what you're gonna see, the welcome, my username, Lisa Long Long and an exclamation point, today's date, how to contact our team if you need help, um, the 888 number or the support email is really the fastest way to get a hold of us. Corey and I both monitor those or answer that call. If we are available, 100% we answer the phone. Um, we'll talk about the additional resources and how to register for upcoming webinars um, over here under support. Um, then we have eSearch, that's searching for documents that your firm recorded electronically. ILR search, which is the new Iowa land records that you searched on forever. Um, admin, so if you're an administrator on the account, you have access to this, support and sign out. So um, under admin, we have different roles on accounts. So we have um, a search user, someone that's only going to search Iowa land records, looking for documents. They're not electronic re like electronically recording. That's one role. Then we have a search administrator. So they can search for records and they can also add other um, search users to the account. Uh, the number of account users and the number in, of people in any role is unlimited. Um, as an admin, if you add someone to your account, you create that username and password. I'll show you how to do that right here under users. So you would go here to add and complete all of this information and including a temporary password. And then you're gonna provide that information to the um, 
person that you're adding. There's not a confirmation email that comes from Iowa Land Records. So you're providing them with the username, the password, and the URL where they log in. And so um, we're not going to confirm that. And that information is good for 24 hours. So don't sit on that information, um, pass that on to them. So going back to roles, um, we have the search user, the search admin, then we have um, the e-submitter. So those people can submit documents for reporting and they can edit documents or delete groups and documents that they've created. And then we have the um, e-submitter administrator. So those people can submit documents for reporting. They can edit and um, delete groups of anyone on the team that are on the account. Um, they have access to adding more people. They have access to reports. They can update the submitter payment information. I'm gonna open this up so I can show you what this looks like. Um, and they really have power for everything. And then you can combine those people. So you can have a submitter admin with search enabled, a submitter user with search enabled. So it just depends on how you want to set those up. And those can change over time. So somebody that was only a search user and now they're going to become a submitter for your organization, easy to add those people to that role. And our team is always happy to help with that. So going back to payment information, so submitter and then submitter payment information and then edit. So a couple of things I wanna show you here. Here's the name of the account. This account number is the Iowa Land Records internal um, number. It does nothing to do with your bank or your credit card. And then edit. And the information that you can edit is available here. And then way down here, you're gonna notice there's nothing saved in the bank information. And that's a security issue. So once the information is added in here and save is selected, it disappears from view, but it is saved in the background. So don't be alarmed if you ever have to edit your information and then it disappears. So I'm not gonna select save because I don't wanna go back in and enter our test information. I'm gonna go back to home. I am going to come back to admin. Um, if you wanted to update the account, um, I can update here with, um, this is actually all of my personal information, my email, my phone number, those kind of things. Um, back to submitter. Back to admin. Oh, submitter information is where I was going. So this is, again, the account name, the type of submitter, uh, the account number, the that it's a bank, the address, um, and all of that information, and anything that you can edit as part of the account uh, users is all right there, and then save. And back under admin, we have reports. Um, let me generate one of those for you real quickly. This is a settlement report. And I'm going to do just the current month real quickly. So this is everything that's been reported. We've been doing some testing in Ringgold County. So um, this is everything that has been reported in all counties. Looks like all of these were Ringgold. And you'll see what the charges were, the group name, submission number, the transaction date. So we did some testing yesterday and the day before. But way across here, you can see the document type and who submitted that. And um, there will be a group name too, so that you can determine who your customer is if those charges need to be uh, charged to somebody. So um, let's get into the submission process and we can always come back to this. And Kristen and Corey, I'm gonna uh, count on the two of you to let me know if there's a question that I've missed. So electronic recording, my favorite thing because it's fast. It's efficient. I think it's cost effective because you're not paying for stamps and time and um, somebody going to the courthouse, driving across the county. I have a great story about someone that I helped get set up in e-submission and she needed to file documents in multiple counties and her plan was to drive to all of those counties. 
this was several years ago, but still gas is expensive, time is time is valuable. Um, we were able to teach her and her admin how to do the electronic recording process. And she was able to get those all recorded within a couple days instead of spending a week or more driving around. So to submit a document or a group of documents for recording, you select new submission, choose the county, and then enter a name. So um, none of this is final until you submit the group, okay? So you won't be able to um, change the group name, but you would be able to change the county. And if you haven't submitted the group, then you can delete it and start over. So I'm gonna select save. Creating the group is like uh, addressing an envelope to get documents to the recorder. You've got them in a pile, maybe you're putting them in a folder so you can walk them across the street to the courthouse. So we've got this empty group named webinar, 0305AA. And now we're going to start creating that stack of documents that you want the county to record. So the first document is a deed. So this is a conveyance document. Here's what you'll notice. The number of auditor transfer fees defaults to one on the five conveyance documents, the deed, the warranty deed, the quick claim deed, the contract, and the affidavit of transfer. It always defaults to one. It's always editable. You can enter any number you like here. Iowa law only allows um, $50 to be charged, even if there are more than 10 parcels. A real estate value is required. Um, so it would be the amount that you're planning to pay transfer tax on. The system automatically calculates that. And it does require a number. Um, so even on a Quick claim deed where there's no tax being paid, you would need to enter one here. And then browse for the documents. Documents should always be scanned in black and white, portrait orientation, and 300 DPI. Doing that ensures that both you and the county has a really good quality recorded document. Um, then it asks you to enter the grantor or the grantee. Only one party name is required, so grantee and either person or um, organization. This one pops up, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that and then save. So here's what you're gonna notice. One, all the fees are calculated here. The standard fee is based on the number of pages in the image that I attached. This is a test document, so it's not really a deed. It's one I grabbed from my, from my folders. Um, transfer fee of $50 because I put 10 in there for the number of auditors. Transfer tax calculated on the $150,000. I'm going to edit this back to one and then save so you can see that it updates all of that there. So now we've only got the $5 transfer fee, the total fee of $254.20, and the total group fees up here are $254.20. And what you're also going to see is that this document, this group requires a declaration of value and a groundwater. So the system is saying, this is a conveyance document. I want those helper docs to come along with it. So they're always scanned separately and attached separately to the group. And they um, have no recording fees. So I'm gonna go ahead and add those. So I'm going to um, add a document and the declaration of value, and they are in alphabetical order. And then browse for the document and select save. So you note things to notice here. There's no, there's no recording fees over here. The group fees didn't change. And down here, the party name has already populated. So that's a setting that you can um, add which is one of my favorite things that we added in what we call um, a submission to, we call this a submission 2.0 or 2.0, that the party name can absolute, can be populated for subsequent documents in a group um, and that it is always editable. So um, I'm just gonna take out Rapid City so you can, you can see what that looks like. So that will automatically update and it's still telling me I need the groundwater. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that one.
and the image. Remember, test documents, so it doesn't matter what I'm using. And it's still got the full party name, the original from what I did. You're only allowed to enter one party name here, um, even though there may be multiple parties on the document. The counties will invoice, not invoice, they will index all of the document, all of the parties on the document. So no need to worry about getting everything in there. And um, so we're good. I've selected save and you can see here's this group of a deed, declaration of value and a groundwater. And the fees didn't change from initially. I'll add another, I'm gonna add a couple more documents. I'm gonna add a mortgage right there. And you will see that the fees are going to change now. So it adds these fees here and it updates these fees here. So you've got the total group fees and you can still um, change the county. So we'll submit to Adams if, instead. And then um, one more quick document add because I wanna show you something else, a really great feature. Power of attorney and save. So I've got all these documents in here. My options down here are to add a document, review the group, or submit the group. Um, I also have the opportunity to send a message to the county if I wanted to. If you ever have questions um, or you would submit something in error, my advice to you is to call the county. Our team will be as helpful as possible. But if you were to submit something in error, it's really good to call the county immediately. Our team can not decline documents or return documents for you. So call the county, say, hey, this is Jane. I'm calling from ABC Bank. I submitted groups for error in, in reporting. Can you please decline those? So um, go ahead and do that. Review the group. We're going to do that right here. We've got the deed, the declaration of value, the groundwater, the mortgage, the power of attorney. Click on the submission number and you can see all the information that was added that was added. You can always edit. Um, I'll just add ABC for some excitement there. So you can always do that. If I were to delete this party, now the system will tell me that indeed I do need to add one. So quickly adding that back in. Um, if I click on the image here, I can see the image that I um, used for this document. So make sure they've got the right one there. Um, you see the status of in progress, indicating it has not been submitted. Um, things up here in the pending group section should be thought of as your to-do list. So we haven't submitted this one yet. And a couple more things. One. Decide you don't want to submit this mortgage right now. Click the trash can to delete it. Should have a pop up here. I sure you wish to delete. This cannot be undone. And I'm going to cancel. I'll go ahead and keep it. But I do want this power of attorney to be the first document in the group. I want it to be recorded first because it says that they have the power to do all the things that they're doing. So um, if you use the oldie submission, you may remember that there were arrows, which gosh, that's been almost two years, I think. You had arrows that you used to get things in the right order. Um, now, all you do is drag and drop to get it up here. So you've got the power of attorney, the deed, declaration of value, groundwater, and mortgage. So I'm gonna take a quick pause here right before I hit submit. Does anyone have questions? I'm going to ask that all of you or as any of you that are comfortable with it, put a message in the chat pod that says what you came um, to learn today so I don't miss anything. So I'm going to go ahead and select submit group on this one. And the only uh, the only notification I get is that it was submitted successfully. OK, there's not an email that will come to you or anything like that. So there is a way to search for that, and we'll do that here in just a minute. Um, I'm going to go ahead and look at this group that I have in 
it's in progress, hasn't been submitted. So if I want to open it up and take a look at what's there, I'm going to select the group name and I can see everything that's here in progress, everything that's been added. Remember, I can edit anything. So it hasn't been submitted, so I can edit it. So I'm going to make this one be um, an affidavit of transfer. It automatically adds that number, that auditor fee. And when I select save, the fees are automatically updated there and again up here. Okay. Um, I'm going to add one more document. So think of when you are submitting a quick claim deed or a deed in fulfillment of a contract. So in both of these situations, you are not submitting the declaration of value in the groundwater because the quick claim deed is likely exempt and the deed in fulfillment of the contract, they were recorded at the time of the contract, okay? So if I was, let's do the deed first. The deed in fulfillment of the contract, you're going to enter the value that you're gonna pay transfer tax on. And then right here, you're gonna select those exemptions because they've already been recorded on this property, okay? So just select those exemptions and then um, grab the image and save. Remember, images are always scanned, black and white, portrait orientation, and 300 DPI, and then save. If I, sub if I did this without those exemptions in there, I'm gonna get those orange warnings that say, hey, you need those. So I'm gonna go ahead and edit this one. Okay, no, cancel and save. So a little over a year ago, there was a new law that went into effect that said, if there are no positive conditions on a groundwater hazard statement, that you don't need to record it. Or you don't need to submit it for review. You don't, okay? Everybody know what I'm talking about? But there's a language that has to be included on the document. So again, you're selecting um, the document type. We'll go to warranty deed way down here at the bottom. Defaults to one. And there's that exemption and grab the image, okay? So that's all you would need to do for something like that. I'm going to uh, select these DOV exemption. No, I won't. I'll do here. And, um, and now it's telling me it wants the declaration of value. So if that all makes sense to everyone, just click the right exemption box when you see that it is requiring something. So one more time, add the declaration of value. If you haven't used e-submission and you're thinking about it and you think it's a little bit intimidating when you're ready to submit the first group, get all your documents scanned and then call our office. Corey and I will both be happy to walk you through this. Okay, so now we've got the group. Everything looks good. Last step, always submit group. Okay, on to fee change and decline documents. I'm waiting for you guys to tell me if I if there's something specific you want me to um, show you how to submit, okay? So um, first let's do fee change. So you submit documents for recording, the county reviews them. So when you submit something for recording, the county receives an email that says, hey, we've got some documents that are ready for your review. They log in, their system looks a lot like this. They've got their pending groups up here, their to-do list, and they're doing the same thing. They're clicking into the group, and then they're clicking into every document and looking at it and make sure, okay, the notary is there, the signatures are there, the notary stamp is there. Oh, this is our state and our county. And trust me, that happens all the time. Um, we just had that last week with something that actually I think should have been filed in Nevada, okay? So the reporter's looking at all those, but they're also looking at the fees. Are the fees correct? And so when they're not, they can change those fees and then they come back to you for approval. 
And so you'll see that these are in the status of the quarter fee change. You've got this message here that the fee amount has been changed. Um, select accept fee change. When those fees change, comes back to you here. Also comes back to you in the form of an email that says, hey, this group that you submitted, and on this group, because there's three documents, you would have received three emails. Those fees have changed. This is who did it at the county. This is their email. This is their phone number. And this is the change that happened, okay? So that you know you can talk to that person if you have questions. If you didn't have time to read that email, but you want to look at everything, click on the submission number, scroll down, and here's the information. The fees change from $90 to $95. We know that an auditor fee is $5. I created this group this morning to look at it and to have this ready to go for you. And so I submitted this as an affidavit of non-transfer. And when I went in to act as the recorder, I changed it to transfer, added this $5, this auditor fee to get that $5. And this is the message that was generated, okay? If you're okay with that fee change, all you have to do is select fee change right here. The status goes to resubmission. And if you go up here, you see the group is still in reporter fee change. You know this is the um, group you're working on right now because there's a... Uh, a lock on it. And if somebody else were to attempt to access this group, they're going to get a warning that makes them acknowledge um, that they that they know that somebody else is already working on it. So remember, the people that can access all groups are admins. E-submitter admins can access all groups. That came out of focus groups we um, facilitated a couple years ago as we were developing this, that we needed, you needed people in your offices, organizations, teams that could take care of things when somebody was out. So there was a fee change. Um, it was submitted by Lisa. She's out for a couple of weeks on vacation um, and we needed somebody else to be able to do it. So that's an admin on the account can do that. And again, you may have as many people in as many roles as you like on your account, the number of users is unlimited. Okay, so back to fee change, here's another one. You received the notification, you didn't read the email, so you wanna take a look at it, and you can see that the fees went down by $7, which is the amount of an additional transaction. This field is there, so if I were to add a document, and add an assignment here. You can see that you can enter the number of additional transactions. In general, I would tell you to not use it. It includes, you're charged an additional transaction when there's more than one transaction on a document. As an example, you're releasing two documents on one um, image that you're submitting. So you're releasing a first and a second mortgage because they did a, oh, a refi, okay? Or you're signing multiple mortgages on one document. What additional transactions is not is the number of additional um, documents or yeah, documents that you're gonna add to the group, okay? And so if that happens, hopefully the county will, will catch it. Everybody's human. If it gets missed, unfortunately, we cannot refund those charges. So in general, I would tell you to not use the number of additional transactions and wait for a fee change from the county, okay? So I'm not gonna add that one. I'm gonna go back here to fee change, click on here. Everything looks good. And then go back up here and accept the fee change. And on this one, um, I'm not gonna look at the history. I believe I'm, I'm gonna accept the fee change. So now the whole group is back in um, submit group because that's always the last step. I want to take one quick second to talk about the difference between an affidavit of transfer and an affidavit of non-transfer. An affidavit of transfer conveys property. It transfers property just like the document type says. Often seen in um, 
an affidavit of surviving spouse. I think that's probably where we see those most. So A and B owned the property. One of them has passed away. This document um, transfers it to the surviving spouse or the surviving owner, okay? Affidavit of non-transfer, statement of fact. Um, personal example, I live in a townhome. I live in an association. If I were to move, the association would need to tell the closing agent that um, my dues are current before they can close. Or if it's not current, um, what how much is owed so that I can pay it, pay it closing. So if you ever have a question about that, our team is always happy to help you. Last step here, submit group. So you want to, this, this is your to-do list, remember? Okay, now on to decline. So you submit docs for recording. Imagine you mailed those over to the recorder or you took them over, left them, said you'll go back after lunch. You're hoping to pick up recorded documents. And when you get over there, you find there was a problem. They missed, you saw a notary stamp was missing. Um, it's the wrong county, whatever. So they've declined them. You take them back to your office to fix them with electronic recording. You're not charged for something until it's actually recorded. So you're not gonna get charged for this, but they are gonna kick this back to you for correction. So we've got this declined group, like any submission with a fee change, you're going to receive the notification electronically in your email that there was a decline and why. Excuse me. So click on the group name. You can see all three of these have been declined click on the submission number, and then you scroll down, and um, they're asking you to please scan it in black and white. All you have to do, rescan the document, make sure it's in black and white, 300 DPI, save it to your device, come in here, click on the submission number, and then edit, and then scroll down and find the new file and save it. So if there's more pages or less pages, the fees will update over here. But remember, test documents here and then save. And then this one is in resubmission. The group status is still declined because there's still, still two documents in decline. And you're working on this group because there's a lock on it, okay? So two more, assignment. Look at what they want you to fix. Um, please review the grantors and grantees for spelling. So you're going to do that and um, rescan the document after you make those corrections. Find the new document, scan it, all those things. Save it. This one updated because I used a totally different. And now this one's in resubmission. And then we've got this affidavit of transfer. And please review legal. And let's just say you decide, well, that legal is way messy and we're gonna do that another time. You're just gonna delete this document from the group and now it's gone. It takes just a second to catch up, there you go. And now you can submit the group and you get this up here that it was submitted successfully. Okay, now you wanna know what happened to those groups. So I'm gonna keep rolling here, but I'm happy to come back and answer questions and um, submit more groups if you want them. And then we'll have a few minutes, I think, and I can walk through the Iowa land records search if anyone has questions. So um, let's first search for e-search. These are documents that your firm, your organization has submitted for electronic recording, okay? And full disclosure that about every six months, we go in and archive the images so that we can save space. So they're still going to be on Iowa land records for you to find, but they're not going to be in eSearch for you to find. Okay. So every county records documents, paper, um, and electronic, everything that's recorded should transfer to Iowa land records. Are there um, missing documents? Yeah, there are because technology is not perfect. And um, sometimes they just don't make the trip successfully, the transfer. Okay, so you wanna find documents that you've recorded or that you've submitted to make sure that you've done something. So in here, e-search, 
and it's think me. And we're gonna search by county and a dare. And I think we submitted to Adams today. And the submission date I can use the calendar too. And search, I'll take, there's a blue bar up here that should be working. Oh, there's my search results. So you can see everything that has been submitted and you can update this to more. So everything that has been submitted today, who did it, the status of ready for a recorder. Okay, so you know that it's out there and ready for them to review. Um, and that they, as the county, have been notified. Oops. Okay. There are some statuses that this will, these documents will go through. So um, we have ready for recorder, recorder approved, then ready for download. So the county has reviewed it and approved it. They're getting ready to download it to their local system then downloaded, stamped, and then finally it gets to a status of county indexed or county index paid. And when that happens, that's when you would be notified that it's ready for you to review. So um, ready for recorder, you submitted all of these successfully and you're waiting for the county, either Ida or Adams to take a quick look at those. Policy provides the county's 24 hours or full business day to review documents that have been submitted for reporting. Most counties are much quicker, just depends on the volume and um, the resources that are available, but most counties are um, much quicker. Okay, so we know those, but we're also gonna search by recently recorded. So you submitted docs for reporting and you received the email that the document had been recorded. You're gonna come in here again, e-search, and then recently recorded, and then search the blue bar indicates that it's been, um, it's searching and you can find those documents. It will give you the most recent 500 documents. So again, the docs I submitted this morning have not been recorded. Um, they're ready to be recorded, reviewed and then recorded. But these in Ringgold, they were submitted and recorded yesterday. So you can find those. Um, you're going to scroll around. You can do all kinds of cool stuff. You can sort by when they were submitted, by the submission number, um, by the county. So we've got Air Dare first. There's Ringgold last. Um, by the group name, if you're looking for something specific. Um, and scrolling across, you're looking for um, everything in order. So we did some 28Es, some abstracts. You can... Um, do all so you can see more as you scroll down if you're looking for something. You can search by um, a group name. So if I pop in webinar, I'm going to get all these docs that are in webinar groups that I've used previously. Or um, if I do like this, the affidavit, everything that's in an affidavit will come up. We get both transfer and non transfer. Um, let's do deed because that should bring up all kinds of stuff. I'm gonna sort this by, um, so it pulls up both the document type that has deed in it and a group name that has deed in it. So um, you just have to filter them out and find out what you're looking for. But we've got all the deeds and then the quick claim deeds and then the warranty deeds. So they're all out there, okay? Everybody good on e-search here? Anything else you want me to submit for your review? Once in a while, we have people that ask about submitting a release of a mortgage. So pretty simple, I think. Home, start a new group. And we're going to do a dare and um, just Jones release and save, select the document type, satisfaction of mortgage, and um,
and then that's it. Easy. A group can be um, one document or multiple documents. We encourage submitters to stay around 10, if possible, not more than 10 in a group, unless um, all the documents are recorded and need to be recorded in a specific order. Also, just a heads up, if you have a deed, a declaration of value, a groundwater and a mortgage, please submit those as one group. Don't submit the mortgage as a, as a second separate group because don't submit the mortgage as a second group unless you wait until the deed is recorded because we have situations where the deed and the declaration of value and the groundwater are declined and the mortgage is recorded. And now there's a recorded mortgage on property that um, the mortgagee didn't, um, didn't own. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, ahead and submit this one. And we can see that it was submitted successfully. I'm gonna delete this group just to clean things up. I'm gonna show you um, one more thing over here under change password is under e-submission attributes by default use party name information from the first document for all subsequent names in a group. So that's the, you submit a document and you enter Bank of the North and then on the next one, it will automatically populate. So you can do that to your own username um, and as an admin, if you want to add that, um, we'll do this one, reactivate her and go right here. And you can do it um, right here under e-submission attributes if you wanna do that for all the users on your team. And we're gonna, Nancy's one of our developers. So I'm gonna show you that she's got her first name, her phone number, her role as a submitter admin, we have search enabled for her, we have the party default in, um, but we could update her to all of those things. I neglected to talk about the accounting role and I do apologize for that. These people have access to generating the reports for reconciliation um, under admin and they have access to updating payment information, but they do not have the ability or the authority um, the permission to submit documents for recording. Um, but that's easily edited if that's something you need. And again, you may have as many users on your account with um, as many roles as you like that works best for your organization. So let's talk about search for a little bit. So this is the new Iowa Land Records Search, Search 2.0. It replaces the search portal that looked like this. Um, and let's do some name searches first. So we're gonna do name search by a person and um, I'm, I'm guessing it names here. Hold on one second. I want this to be successful. And I still have access to the old site. So I think I can use my access here um, to make this be a better experience for you. Any second now. A little bit slow. Okay.
So on the old site, I'm searching for March 1 forward in Dallas County. And Okay, we're gonna use this person because she's right at the top. Last name of Abba, except that does not work because we are in staging. Okay, plan B. We quickly log into our production environment. I'm waiting for my uh, token so that I can get in. I'm sorry, this is taking so long because it's usually very quickly. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm going to abandon that because I'm not happy with the way the results are, that's going to happen. What I would tell you is that you need to search for exact names. So um, in the old system, if you searched for John Peters, you would get John Peters, John Peters' son, um, and that would be both S-O-N and S-E-N, okay? In Iowa Land Records, the new one, Search 2.0, if you want to do get those same results, you need to use an asterisk as the wild card so that you get all of those results, okay? Um, I still don't have a token, so I can't go back. And then you would need to enter a date range. Um, and if you know about when it was reported, you can do that. So maybe you know something was reported last month or you're doing something where you're searching everything in a county, you can do last month. Um, if I'm doing a custom search, if one of you were to call me and ask me for some help with searching and you're not sure of anything, um, I usually start with um, January 1st. Um, of 2020. No, that's not right. January 1st of 2000, and then search from there. Um, and Corey ran and gave me a, a token, but I'm looking for a, a production token, and I don't know why I'm not getting it. So anyway, and then search. This will not return any results because I'm in staging. Um, you can also search by reference, so either a book and page, selecting the county, and then the book number and the page number, um, and then a date range if you have one, or a reference number if you have that one. If you have a number, but you're not sure how it works, you're not sure how the county indexes, or you've entered information, you've entered book and page, and you're not getting anything back, maybe it's time to move on and do a county search so you're going to choose the county and then a date range, um, a date range that is um, about when you're searching. Okay, so was it last month? If you do that, then you can figure out um, when, um, how they index. Do they use book and page? Do they use indexing? And did it change? Because it changes over time as um, people change or service providers change. Okay. Um, you can do a document type search. So maybe you are someone who um, your firm wants to see all the mortgages that were reported in Adair County in the last month. You can do that here. Um, or you want to do it for Adair and Adams. I think you can only do one here. You can do that with a date range of the last month and then search. Again, 
this is our staging environment, so it will not return results. Uh, so we've got we've talked about name search, reference search. Um, always best maybe to use the county search if you're not getting results, so you can come back to reference search and determine how they index, either book and page or reference number. Location search, either platted or unplatted, entering information there and then search. Um, sometimes less is more. So you've got um, the subdivision, enter that. Um, sometimes you have to determine how they actually spelled it. Um, okay. I'm just seeing uh, chat messages pop up. So we'll go back to those. Um, county search, and then we've got advanced search here. First name, last name, all this information. So um, it's different. It's fast. It is different from the old system. I am not going to pull any punches on that because it's exact name match. Will that change over time? Maybe. We're 90 days into all users using search. We're not quite ready to make big changes to everything. We used focus groups of users to facilitate and talk to about what they liked, what they didn't like, what would make things better for them. And so we have not, um, we're not ready to change that, but we're totally open to feedback. Email us support at claris.com. Uh, maybe Corey or Kristen, one of you can pop that in our phone number into the chat pod so that um, if anyone has feedback, um, we would be happy to take that. If you're a surveyor and you're on today, um, Phil Dunchy, our project manager, will be speaking at the S SLSI conference on Friday morning at eight. Um, and he'll be talking about some different initiatives we have going with the surveyors. Um, how, okay, so back to this. Ken, how does the system know when a groundwater hazard isn't needed? It's only on conveyance documents that it is required. So deed, warranty deed, quick claim deed, contract. I think those are the only four, okay? So otherwise, and do you receive email once, an email confirmation if it's a recorded or declined? Can we email? It was recorded, it was declined, there's a fee change. You're gonna get those email notifications. Um, and we've got the email and the phone numbers out there. Great job from Corey and Kristen. We have about five minutes left. I've been talking a lot. What questions do you have? Are you ready to um, use e-submission? Are you ready to search? Are you ready for our team to help you? I said earlier, our team is small but mighty, and that's true. That's not going to change. But if you have questions about how to search for something, let us know. Call us. Say, I have looked everywhere, Lisa, Corey. I can't find this. Um, I, my, my, my internal response to that is, game on. Let's find it. It's got to be out here somehow. And to help you learn the, the tips and tricks that um, are required. So... Um, I'm going to do last call for questions, and um, we'll take the list of um, attendees today. We'll get some follow-up information out to you, including some um, search tips. And um, thank you for being here today. Thank you for spending part of your day with us. I know time is valuable and limited, and I really do appreciate you sharing part of your day with us and asking questions. Yes, please. Let us help you. Yes, please give us your feedback, okay? And everyone, have a really good day and um, take care. Come visit us at an upcoming event. We'd love to see you. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Bye-bye.